Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today on Bear Builds Bikes, we're going to be assembling a Cannondale Adventure 2. This one happens to be a large ladies step through version in lavender. Should be a lot of fun. Let's get started. All right, so as you can see, we're back here at the home garage shop. We're going to just rip into this thing, get the bike out of the box, get it unpacked. We'll do that all kind of in a fast forward thing, uh, just so you don't have to sit through all of it. And then we'll get her up into the stand and start the assembly from there. And remember to grease your seat post. So now we'll go through the unpacking process, get all the styrofoam off, the plastic, get it ready to do the final assembly. This, uh, we're going to do it fast forward. So we got her up into the stand. First thing I like to do is to flip the stem over. They pack it in a downward facing motion so that it fits in the box better. But most riders want to sit a little more upright on these bikes. So holding the fork firmly at the crown, making sure it doesn't slide out of the head tube, I'm going to take the preload screw out from the top with the cap. The stem already comes loose. So all I have to do is take it and flip it so that it's in an upward facing motion. Then I can put the cap and the preload screw back in. And remember this screw is the tension of the entire headset. It pulls the whole head tube together onto the bearings so you don't want to over tighten it you still want to be able to turn it now the fork is currently backwards so let's turn that around and then bring the stem to us which tightened that bolt now I got to loosen it back up I don't want any play in the headset but I do want it to turn freely now I can tighten up the clamp bolts. They're not going to be perfect right yet because we don't have everything assembled. But we'll get them snug enough to where they're supporting some of the weight once we get the front wheel and the handlebar on. Another tip is to make sure that your tool is firmly seated into the bolt. You could easily strip these out. Like I said, not a lot of tension just yet. We're gonna pull the cap bolts off, get the handlebar up in it, and then from there we'll be able to finalize the cable routing, get the front wheel in, and adjust the front brake. Our handlebar orientation with the cables should be where we want it. We're gonna take out the cap bolts, Put our handlebar in place, put our cap back on, start the bolts by hand. Thank you. 
We'll make sure that our alignment is where we want it with the way the controls are going to be set up. We will adjust it later, but get your handlebar centered. Make sure that there are equal number of stripes on either side. You can always change the configuration of your controls if you need to. But for now, we'll just get these bolts tightened down. Holding with my thumb, working from a cross pattern on the bolts. Just get them to where they're snug. And you want equal distance in the gap between the cap and the actual stem. Get your handlebars configured where you think that they're going to be comfortable before you tighten anything down. I like a gentle rise. We will move the controls out to meet that and just snug these up. You may end up loosening them again, but at least you're in the general ballpark. And then we'll work on the front brake. Your brake cable comes from the factory, tucked in for packing purposes. What we're going to do is we're going to route it through the holder. Sometimes you can wiggle these through like that. Sometimes you have to loosen up the little nut on the end. We're gonna run it through our bale And we're going to loosen up our holding bolt and we're going to tuck the rest of the cable through the routing with the washer and the clip. Tighten up on it just a little bit. You also want to make sure that the adjuster barrel at the top is all the way in. You want to give the customer the ability to adjust that. We should be able to do it here. Now, because this wheel has never been in this fork, we're going to loosen up the caliper bolts so that we do not damage the rotor when we put it in. That gives us freedom of movement so it won't pull the rotor when we slide the wheel in. All right, so in our parts box, our pedals, our reflectors, our front skewer, our owner's manual and the technical data sheet. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I like to start in the front because that's two thirds of the stopping power and I like to make the bike stop before I work on getting it to go. Just a general principle rule for me. So we're gonna take our front skewer, we're gonna open it up, we're gonna take off the first spring, leave the second one intact, conical shape, fat side to the flange. Going to put a little grease on it. Now this side goes through the left side of the wheel. If you look at the tread here, this is the forward facing direction right now. You can see that better like that. That's forward. This is the left side and it's where the rotor is. So this is going to go through the wheel there. We're going to put our spring skinny side in and then put our cap on. We're going to inflate our tire to 70 PSI on these. That's your maximum recommended air pressure. Then we're going to slide it up into the fork. So with the rotor on this side, we're going to slide her up into the frame, into the caliper. I put my knee under the tire and go clockwise until the skewer starts to get snug. Then I test it. Back off if I need to. Get it to where it's going to stay really good and snug. And make sure the center of the tread is in line with the fork. 
So now that we know that our wheel is centered in our fork, we're going to adjust our brake. Now we've already loosened up the calipers so that we know that it's free moving. One way that you can attempt to do this is by squeezing the brake lever. That will set the caliper in place and you can just snug up the two holding bolts. I like to use a long Allen wrench, it gets in there better. And then you can test it. You can still hear a little rub. We can make minor adjustments to see if we can get rid of that and then we'll fine tune the cable. What we're looking for is about a half a pull before the wheel is completely stopped. Then we can trim off the rest of our cable, put a cable crimp on it, that brake should be ready to go. When you're happy that it's not rubbing anymore, everything is aligned right, you've got your cable crimp on, make sure that you go back and tighten everything down so that nothing moves and that your cable isn't going to slide through. And you should be good to go. So now since we're moving towards the rear of the bike, the next thing we'll do is unpack and install the pedals. A little grease on the spindles. Grease in the crank arm. These particular ones are not, uh, they have the stickers on them, but they're not stamped. Right side for right, clockwise motion to get it started. Once the threads start to pick it up, move on to the next one. Then with our 15 millimeter pedal wrench, We pedal backwards. Seat the pedals very well. Press down. Now, as you can hear, the gears are definitely going to need some work on this one. When it comes to our shifting, We want our chain and both our jockey wheels to be in a straight line all the way up and down, all the way along with the drivetrain. Now as we shift each gear, one click of the derailleur should move it to where it's centered between this gear and this gear. There should be no touching on either side as it comes around before it gets into that jockey wheel. When they are nice and straight, and they go through each gear with one click, a little lag there means could be more tension. Turn outwards to bring the chain over a little bit more. Next gear, next gear, next gear. Now you also want to be conscious that the derailleur is not going to move beyond the last chain ring. And that is your low stop screw right here. So if that is bottomed out at the end of the travel, that's exactly where it needs to be. Now we'll go back down to seven. The derailleur does not come any further that way, meaning that our high screw is adjusted properly. All we need to do now is get the reflectors on it, get her down, and get everything adjusted. I set the rear reflector in this position so that I can get to the bolt underneath in the event that I need to move the seat. Plus the screw is on this side anyway.
With all the major components put on, we're going to take her down, get everything adjusted to where the rider would have ultimate comfort. She does have a kickstand. We will use it. All right, so our seat looks pretty level. We shouldn't have to adjust that. We will turn our reflector around and we will put our seat down. and align it with the frame. Handlebars we want in line with the front wheel. These two bolts on the back of the stem are the ones that we need to loosen in order to align that. I'm trying to align the entire stem all the way to the tip of the front wheel. I'll show you that from a different angle while we're doing this. And then tighten down the two clamp bolts. If the handlebars feel like they're in a good position, you can tighten down the stem bolts if they have enough rise to them. If not, now is the good time. Tilt them into the position you think would be best. You're going to move the controls. The grips are lock on. We'll move those as well. Everything on these can be adjusted. But once you have this in the, in the proper position, then you can go ahead and lock down the screws. You want your controls in a comfortable position so that they're not hard to get to when you're seated. If you're having to reach down and pull up or if you're having to reach down like that, it's very uncomfortable. Much easier just to adjust them now. And you can line up across your brake levers to see that they're at the same pitch or you can put your hands across and feel it. Tighten everything down when you get it in the right position. All right, it looks like we've gotten through another one. Take it for a ride, make sure everything shifts properly, that the brakes will actually stop it. This is another one for the books. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you have a special request on a bike, if it's something that we have in our in our market, we will try to get one built for you. Any questions, put them in the comments below. Have a great day.